Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is sap chat time. It's not a tutorial. It's just a weekly kind of catch up. How's it going type video. We talk about projects we've done during the week. We talk about what you're up to. You can leave your, uh, your status in the comments. Let me know what you've been working on. Chit chat with your friends down there while you're at it. And uh, yeah, we just have a good time. This is not a tutorial. I just like to warn people in case you're sitting down thinking, oh, I'm going to learn something today with Lindsay. And then they're like, what is this nonsense? It's utter nonsense. You've been warned. Uh, I did make a list, uh, I did make a note on my phone so that I won't forget anything. It's been such a weird week because I've been working on um, actually a couple different freelance projects um, and so it's like ah, I can't I can't talk about those yet because they're not out yet so uh, I better keep myself on track and, and write things down. Um, I did a little bit of a studio reset after sat chat last week. I'm actually gonna turn that just a little bit. Uh, so you like my colorful background? Uh, that the the board the board back there with the paint tubes I think that looks really cute I did that <laughs> it's probably gonna fall apart it's probably gonna fall while I'm talking to you but it's actually been standing for a week so I'm feeling pretty good it's um it's my my DIY pin board that I made um, I think I did a video on it a few years ago when I made it I took a uh, foam core and I decoupaged pattern like sewing pattern tissue on it and um, I just used um, Oh, uh, what do you call it? Those uh, frame framers points. I have a little framers point gun, and I, and I secured them in there with framers points. A lot of frames have the little things in there, so you don't even need to do that. And put a wire on the back, and I use that to tack up handmade earrings at craft fairs and stuff. And I've had it for years. I mean, my gosh, I might have, I might have had that for like ten years. I don't even know. It's it's been around, and uh, it's just so it's just foam core in there. And I wanted to make a colorful display with these bottles of paint in the background. So I'm like, I bet if I use clear tacks. I could I'll kind of line them up and fill the if they filled they fit perfectly they filled the space perfectly perfect spacing it was amazing I just had like a little bit of like a, a gap at the bottom like one inch across but I think it looks fine um, so I'm so happy with that little decoration and um, I just kind of put some lined up some bottles and yeah I just you know kind of updated it a little bit uh, did that last uh, I think it was after I film sat maybe after I filmed the day after I filmed sat chat last week I can't remember but maybe last weekend I don't know this it's been a blur it's been a blur I, I've been I'm feeling great today I had a great night of sleep feeling very uh, upbeat and optimistic but um I was kind of like uh definitely stressed out last week and oh all through probably through yesterday and um but I feel like I actually have everything under control I, <laughs> last week when I said I had everything under control that was a lot of that was a lot of fingers crossed a lot of a lot of hoping a lot of hoping things got under control things are are I'm on schedule this week we better knock on some actual wood here because <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself because yesterday oh I'll have to I'll have to get into that um but anyways, this week uh, I did post a cra uh, card making paper craft video. It's a very simple one, um, but it's also something you can do with your kids and for your kids. It's making some activity favors. So if you've got, if you host Easter dinner, actually this could be for any time you're having people over to eat and you might have some younger kids. Um, it's a little activity, a uh, little, little um, like coloring and decorating activity, making a little box and... Um, and then we used all the leftovers to make a couple Easter cards. I, I think they're cute. They're very, they're very kind of like childlike, but, um, but they're, they're fun to make. And you know what was also really cool? This is something I hadn't really done yet, but I intended to when I put the markers up here. Um, I actually colored at this table and it worked out really well. And I want to show you, I, uh, I don't think I showed it on this channel. I think I only showed it over on Instagram, but I've been using this lamp that's, um, is it, I think it, it just, I don't think you can order it yet, but I think you can like sign up on their Kickstarter. It's from this company, this French company called Redgrass Games, and they they don't they really cater more towards like um, people that do uh, like miniature painting, like painting like little figurines and things like that, uh, than like um, like a typical artist or crafter. But their products are really good for artists and crafters. And I want to show you this light here. Um, I think can I can you see that up there? It's uh, it's super rugged. It's pricey though. I'm not gonna lie. It is it's a pricey um, thing. But I have it connected to the corner of my um, my little cube unit there, and it lights the space up so well. So if I want to um, if I want to color over here, now I have this perfectly daylight balanced light, and I can I can like um, change the blaze around so it's it's pointing exactly where I want it so it's perfect I can sit your color grab my colors and it's actual true representation now you don't have to have expensive lights like that for your studio I don't want anyone to think that they have to go out and you know order a $200 light because I know that's like <clears throat> that's 
very expensive, but it's very fit for a purpose for me because I had it over there too as a fill light when I was doing some photography last week. And um, it was a lot easier to control than my, because um, like what I also have, I'll just share this because sometimes people ask, um, then what I have typically, which are those, I have a block on, on the ceiling. The ceiling is tongue and groove pine. And I've got this bar. It's basically just a piece of wood. And then I have um, aluminum shop lights that you can get from like Home Depot or Amazon for like about 10 bucks a piece or maybe a little less. And uh, that's how I have three over my table. That's how I light. And that's how I light in the room of Horde as well. Oh, I also want to show this because somebody was asking me how I film over my studio. I have this uh, piece of wood with a hole drilled in it. And this screw here, it's called the thumb screw. It's a quarter inch thumb screw. And it's got, um, and I can screw my camera into that. It's like the perfect, um, it fits my camera mount perfectly. It's like a standard, it's a standard like tripod mount. So I, I just get asked that like at least once a week. Somebody, <laughs> hopefully they're watching my Snapchats, but somebody asks me at least once a week, how do you film? And um, yeah, it's very simple. It's nothing that fancy. I'm in a basement. I'm in this, um, this kind of spare finished room in the basement. So it doesn't have to look attractive, but if you needed something that looked attractive, that was daylight balance, that's a pretty good solution. Upstairs on my uh, my fun art desk, I have a little alt light. Uh, my husband got me for my birthday and it's very compact. It doesn't give off this kind of light, unfortunately, but it's pretty good. And uh, like if I have the overhead lights on and I have that lamp, it's, it's adequate. Um, but because it has a longer bar on it, it really does, um, it really does, I don't know, cast a more uniform light. But anyway, um, I will link to Redgrass Games Kickstarter if anybody's interested in that. Uh, it's very rugged, uh, very well made, does not feel chintzy at all. Um, I'm not being paid to promote it. They just uh, asked me for a, they sent it to me about a month ago, wanting some feedback on it to see if what I thought about it as far as like artists would be concerned. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't obligated to do anything other than tell them what I thought of it. So I thought I'd tell you too, in case you were thinking about it or you had a need for a light like that. But again, yeah, it is pricey. There's definitely more affordable solutions you can find, but that's a good one too. Um, all right, let's see. What, what do I, oh, this week, <laughs> this week, the, 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 the I'm stuttering. The uh, frustrating thing is I can't really tell you much about this week, except um, we have that card making project up. I also did an oil pastel techniques video. So if you have some oil pastels, you're not really sure how to use them, or maybe you're thinking about buying some oil pastels because there's a lot of really nice affordable versions out nowadays that are pretty good quality. Um, kind of give you a primer on how to use them. So you're not just completely lost for techniques. Um, that's up on my channel and people have really been enjoying that video. So I'm glad. I think it's going to be a really useful one. I Let's see, it's my 10 favorite techniques. And of course, there's other techniques that you can do because you're going to come across different techniques techniques just by playing. Um, like I didn't even mention scumbling, but it's probably because I don't really do scumbling that much. Um, but anyways, 10 techniques there for you to try. Um, oh, I got asked to be a World Watercolor Month ambassador this week. And I was telling myself, Lindsay, do not say yes to another thing. Cause I've been so stressed out. I've just, I've just said yes to too many things. Um, because it's kind of been my year of yes. It's like, if a friend calls you and says, Hey, want to have, want to have coffee? Want to go to lunch? Say yes. Or, or invite somebody out to lunch, you know, say yes to those things because life is short. And, um, I've been saying yes to way too many things. It's like, I know it's my year of yes and my year of connections, but I need to have a couple weeks of no so I can catch up. But uh, but when Charlie uh, contacted me, uh, Charlie O'Shields from Doodle, Doodle Wash and asked me if I'd be an ambassador, I'm like, yeah, uh, totally. And um, so I have to choose a piece of artwork. If you guys have any opinions on this, please let me know. I got to choose a piece of artwork to go on a souvenir pouch. And all of the profits of the, the sales of that pouch are going to um, a children's charity that raises money for art education programs and art supplies for kids. So it's all going to charity. I'm not going to be profiting at all off of this. But I love World Watercolor Month. I think I've done it since it started. And I've successfully done all 31 days, several years anyway. Uh, well, let's see. How many years have I done all 30, 31 days? I don't know. Last two years I have. But it's so much fun. I love that. I love that challenge. My favorite art challenge, that and Inktober are my two favorites. Um, so yeah, I'm, I was so honored to be, uh, to be asked. So yeah, I'm like, oh, I have to say yes to this. I did say no to some other things. It's still, the, I did say no to another, another job this week that did sound really fun, but I didn't give a hard no. I said, can, can you contact me in the fall? Because this is just, <laughs> I'm, I'm booked through the summer, uh, which is a little bit of a lie because actually my summer is booked by me and things I want to do. Um, that's what I book my summer with and, and time with my family and, uh, uh, and that sort of thing. So time, time outside in the good weather, time with my family, time 
outside painting, time doing the work that I want to do because I don't seem to lack inspiration in the summer. I'm always very energized and I swear I'm solar powered. I'm very energized and I have all kinds of ideas and things I want to do in the summer. I like to go places in the summer. It's just in the winter when everything is just so oppressive and cold and snowy and the roads are bad. It's like I don't want to go anywhere or do anything. I'd rather just buckle down and work. So um, in the summer I like to I like to do fun things and just be outside because it's like I don't have to worry about um, even if I want to fly somewhere I don't have to worry about a plane being a flight being canceled because of the weather or um, the roads being too bad that we have to cancel last minute or whatever so that's what I'm booked doing this summer hopefully lots of fun <laughs> tons of fun um, and not you know, my basic YouTube and my basic uh, teachable stuff but. Um, I'm working on a teachable class. It is 30 days to better painting. I know I've taught, I mentioned it before, but I'm still working on it. Um, kind of, uh, fitting it in, uh, here and there, but, um, yeah, I mean the, the whole process of that, the whole premise of that painting is making time to paint every day. So I think it's going to be a really good, it's a really good, um, uh, it's, kind of good to be planning it as I'm having a very busy time in my life so I can hopefully distill some of those nuggets down and be like yeah this is what you do in your days like this you know and give yourself a break if you need to give yourself a break and all that stuff but um oh trying uh did I mention this yet I had to start this over again because there was a noise that distracted me um I'm trying a little uh, curtain bang side part thing here I think I like it um I kind of I like to experiment with my hair and that was a pretty uh, non-damaging one to do. I'm like, ah, uh, my hair had been, my, my, it's, my hair is very dirty right now. It's been like, <laughs> it's been a week since I washed it. I am such a bridge troll. But um, I don't like to wash my hair that often because it just gets dry. Uh, so I'm like, I want to try something new. So I'm like, I'm going to try a side, uh, center part, center part and curtain bangs. And uh, a couple, like about a month ago, I gave myself a butterfly haircut. And that's when you like pull, like you, you part your hair, like from the apex of your head to behind your ears. And you pull all this front hair in a ponytail, like a unicorn, like right there. And they should call it a unicorn cut. So like right there, I learned it from Brad Mondo on YouTube, if you want to see a good tutorial. So you pull into ponytail there and the rest of your hair, you pull up in a ponytail on top of your head. And then you pull the horn out and you cut it straight across and then you pull the horn up and you cut it so you're like a double unicorn and you cut you cut your horns and then you let your hair down and if there's any chunky weird bits then you um then you like you know I did a good job look at that I got a nice taper um then you just kind of like uh you just kind of make a match but it gives you long layers and I and I really kind of like that and Lila's off at college so I can't ever cut my hair and I'd been doing some serious uh damage to my hair so I'm like I need to be trimmed in here because we got some crispy crispy ends um so yeah I was like I think I want to try I think I want to try the curtain bangs the, the middle part curtain bangs and I think I like it um curtain bangs yay yay or nay you know, um, I don't wish to hear about anybody's opinion on the color of my hair today because either it's either you love it or you hate it. I find like I, I feel like half of my audience likes me as a redhead, half like me as a blonde. And whenever I change it, <laughs> I get uh, I get um, disgruntled opinions about uh, about it. Nothing mean spirited or anything. Just like I think your hair looked better when it was long and blonde. It's like, yeah, it's that was a lot of work. <laughs> I liked it better when it was red. Yeah, that's a lot of work too. I think short and blonde is the uh, is the answer for me for my personality, at least in the summer. But uh, I bought a product, and this was actually recommended by one of you guys called Color Oops, and um, I haven't done it yet because I'm a little daunted by the uh, by the length of time or the amount of rinsing that it takes. But what it is is a color remover, and I did I to kind of get the red out of my hair. I did make my own color remover at home. This was like a month and a half ago or so. Whenever I was transition transitioning from red to blonde um and let's see what was it it was like uh i don't know it was baking soda there's lemon juices all sorts of different homemade re recipes you can use for color removing color from your hair and uh, basically works by kind of stripping it um but this stuff you put in your hair and i guess it smells atrocious um and you put it in your hair and then you put the shot this cap on and you wrap your head in a towel and you let it sit for 20 minutes and then you have to rinse it out for five minutes and you got to shampoo it and then you got to rinse it for 15 to 20 minutes, like constant rinsing. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like the environmentalist in me is just like, oh, uh, what are you doing? Wasting all that water. Oh, it's Maine. We hate lots of water up here, but still. 
And, uh, you know, it's funny to think about, like, all of the water that's in the world is all the water that's ever been in the world. So, like, we are, like, showering in, like, dinosaur pee and stuff because it's all just recycled. It's all the same water that's ever been is still here being reused and reused and reused. It's so, it's so interesting to think about, you know? Um, but anyway, so, and this color oops stuff, it, it shrinks the color molecules. It only works on artificially colored hair. So if, like, your hair was blonde and you dyed it black, then, and you wanted to get rid of the black, or the brown, or the red, or whatever, uh, you use that stuff and it would take out the artificial dye, but leave your natural pigment alone, because it shrinks the artificial, like the, uh, they call it oxidate, it re reverses the oxidation, it, it shrinks the um, oxidized, because you, if your dye has peroxide in it, it's an oxide, it shrinks the oxidized particles, so they can fall out of your hair, rinse out of your hair. Uh, but you've got to do all the rinsing, because if you don't, rinse it all out, then they can swell back up again and redeposit, and then your hair can, like, it can look like it's light, and then it can go dark again, like, the next day, because the particles have plumped back up, I guess, and, and stuck back in. I don't know, so it's like, yeah, when I do it, I want to follow it to the letter, and I was going to do it yesterday afternoon, and uh, I had got, uh, I got all my filming done for the morning. See, it's been very, it's been difficult filming. I'd go, I get some filming done, and then, um, uh, Jackson, my son, has been building a uh, set of shelves for his girlfriend's. Um, his girlfriend is a is a pet um, groomer, and he was in a salon and was building some shelves for her salon cubicle. And um, so I didn't. I wanted to get my filming done before he came here to use all the tools because he works in my husband's uh, workshop because he has an apartment and doesn't have like tools at his apartment and. Uh, so I got all that stuff done. I'm like, perfect. I'm going to do my color oops in the afternoon. I didn't want to do it in the morning because I didn't want to like run out, of, like use up all the hot water before Jason had to go to work. So, and also apparently it stinks like rotten eggs. And I really didn't want to like uh, have be doing that with my like husband home because he would tease me and say I was like farting or something. And I do not care for like jokes that make me seem gross. <laughs> so I hate that. I don't like it. I don't like it. My husband will be like, make a fart joke or something directed towards me as if I was the one who farted. Oh no, I do not care for that. That is not appropriate. <laughs> I don't even let him see me floss, guys. So it's like <laughs> the Queen of England over here. You guys get to see the sketchy bridge troll, but <laughs> my husband thinks I'm the Queen of England. Uh, no, he doesn't. He's, he knows, he knows. I'm a hobo. Um, but anyway, where was I? So I was going to do the color oops. So Jackson's here. And he's uh, he's working on his shelves, and he and he had the um, uh, miter saw out back on the picnic table, and he was making cuts outside. And he came, he went to bring the miter saw back in. We keep doors, I keep doors shut, but the kids will like leave all the doors open. And he had the, we have a door that goes from the garage to the backyard. There's also a door that goes from the garage into the main part of the house. And he had both doors open. He was bringing the miter saw in, but he also had left the door from the house to the garage open. And Penny went out there and saw that back door open. Jason, Jackson was carrying the saw and she bolted. So Penny took off, Jackson tried to get her. He went he drove around the loop. And as soon as Penny saw him, he took off. Uh, she took off. And so I went out looking for her. I spotted her in a neighbor's yard. I tried to get close to her. She took one look at me and took off. And we could not get her. We couldn't get her for like an hour. And I couldn't, I, I saw her like one more time. And then it was like 45 minutes and I hadn't seen her. And usually she tires herself out and is back in like 20 minutes, like on the porch, ready to come in covered in mud and Lord knows what. And, um, and I was, I was starting to get worried. I was just like, she's never gone this long. What if something happened to her? What if something got her? Um, I mean, I don't know where it's not really, we're in the country, but it's not like really that rural. It's more, it's not really suburbs. We don't really have suburbs in this area, but it's, you know, it's neighborhoody, I guess I would say. Um, but you never know. I mean, she could have got por porcupine or, or whatnot. And, uh, so I posted on my community, community's Facebook page. I'm like, uh, my dog got out here, and I'd just taken a picture of her being cute, napping in a sunbeam earlier in the day, and uh, so I posted that picture, and oh, she looks so sweet. Nobody knows the little devil dog that she actually is. That devil dog was running. Do you remember devil dogs? The little cakey, those off, they were so dry. Those, those, do you remember those? Like, I, I can't remember, Drake's? I think they were Drake's devil dogs back in the 80s. They were these super dry. I think my mother only bought them because they would be the last thing that any of us would touch because they were so dry, so she would be able to have, like, have a sweep without us kids, like, totally uh, devouring it. But they were these really dry, um, like, cakey, 
desserts that had this cream in it, but not enough cream to like account for all the dry cakiness. But anyways, they're called Devil Dogs and I'm calling Penny a Devil Dog because she totally is. And I mean, and then I was just like, I was getting so mad. I'm like, I, this is such a busy week and I just really want to, you know, do this crazy treatment to my hair because I have a block of time to do this. And I was just, and, and I can't even edit things because I'm like constantly going outside calling to her, looking for her. I posted on the community board and a couple neighbors had actually seen her and so a bunch of us uh, managed to corral her and what worked was um, my neighbor Kristen has a husky and she's like do you think if I brought my dog out that she would come to her and I'm like you know what I think she would and so she brought the dog out and Penny came over and was looking and but she wouldn't come near me as soon as I'd go to her she'd go to run so I, I said well I think I'm gonna take this dog home instead so I went and took Kristen's dog's leash and I'm like I think I'm gonna take this is a nice dog I'm gonna take this dog home and Penny was like wait a minute and then she came up to me and I was able to hook her and get her home but my gosh we had like there were like six people just kind of like making a, a small circle trying to man she is so skittish at least I don't have to worry about her like biting somebody or attacking somebody because she will not go near people she's very like she just wants to run she just wants to see other dogs and run and be free and I don't know I was probably she'd run away I thought she might have run away with a pack of deer or something because she's always trying to get to the deer but uh we got her we got her I don't even know well how much time do we have left we got we got about eight minutes oh my I have a little, oh yeah, 7 minutes, 13 seconds left. I've got, sometimes I have a little countdown timer on the corner of my camera. I don't know why it's not always there, but, um, but anyways, that was a dog mayhem for the day. And I was having some very unkind thoughts toward this dog. And then I was starting to feel really bad. So I'm like, what if she could read my mind? Maybe that's why not. she's not coming home. Cause she can tell that I'm thinking really, uh, horrible horrible thoughts and I'm very angry and maybe she can sense it. And that's why she's not coming home. And I, and I woke up this morning at like four in the morning and I was worried that her collar was too tight because I had, uh, usually, like, I, I don't know, usually if I want to put a collar on her, it's all, I have it on the last rung. It's practically like a necklace on her, you know, because I'm like, I don't want her, I don't want it to be uncomfortable. I don't want her to choke. But I'm like, I'm not putting on that collar that loose because she'll just back out of it and take off again. I was just like, I'm not playing that game. Uh, so I put it on the second to the last not notch. Usually you can get your whole hand through her collar, but I'm like, okay, two fingers, I say that's all right. But then I was like, well, she's sleeping like that. Maybe that collar's too tight. So I went down to, uh, I went downstairs. I think I heard her too. And, uh, and she was stepping on the steps because it was really windy and it started to rain. So she's nervous with the weather and stuff. So uh, I came downstairs, I took her collar off and I, and I laid down with her in the living room because uh, I was feeling guilty for how angry I was with her <laughs> yesterday. And uh, of course, when she came home, she knew she was going to have to bath because she she smelled like she rolled in something dead. It was disgusting. Like she walked in the room. It's like, oh, whoa, that that's I'm sure that stinks worse than whatever the stuff I'm going to put in my hair is. Um, and so I had Jackson, Jackson, the honors of helping me bathe her since he was the one that left the door open. So she got loose. And uh, and, you know, I, and I something that occurred to me because I'm like, I fill I fill a tub up about that about that high and um, like I'll scoop water or shampoo and scoop water to rinse her. I'm like, I think we need to rinse her with fresh water because, you know, she's just so she stinks. But she, the sound of the water freaks her out. She, she doesn't even like to swim. And so I had Jackson hold a washcloth over her ears. Well, mainly so I didn't pour water on her neck uh, like and get it in her ears by mistake, because that's where they get really smelly. That's where they roll. They'll roll like neck first into gross stuff. And, uh, and so I turned the water back on to rinse with fresh water and didn't seem to bother her when she had her ears covered. And I was thinking, geez, that might be something. I wonder if she would even let me blow dry her if I had, if we had something like that on her ears, because otherwise she just kind of like air dries. Um, and I don't think, you know, she'd rather be dry, dry. Cause especially if you go outside and it's chilly, but anyway, that was, that was her little adventure and my irritation, um, for the... <laughs> for the day and plus I was didn't I didn't hadn't been sleeping very well and so I was just kind of on edge anyway and I was stressed out this was just one more like one more straw and uh yeah, I wasn't having it I was so I was I was fit to be tied I was so I was so mad I was mad at both my son and the dog equally well I was probably more mad at the dog I don't know it's pretty equal. Cool. <laughs> um Oh, I mentioned in my, in my uh, oil pastel video that I can't find my silicone tip tools and I still don't know where they are. And people were saying, they're in that, they're in that gray, they're in this gray cubby. Yes, they should be in that gray cubby, but they're not. They're not in there. That's where I went looking for them originally. And I don't know. I don't know where they are. And it's like, I looked in my gel printing stuff. I looked in my little mini gel printing 
stuff that I keep in here for if I just want to do a small print. I looked in my big box of gel printing stuff in the other room. I looked with my pottery tools because I, I mean, I had the same idea because a couple of you guys were like, well, maybe you use different pottery. It's like, I had that same idea. Looked with my pottery tools, couldn't find them. Um, I'm like, when did I use them last? I know it probably would have been with like oil pastels. I'm trying to think, what was my last oil pastel thing? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know where they are. It's gonna, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm gonna like, it's gonna like, I'll probably wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, ah, I know where they are and I'll have to run down here and find them so I don't forget before I wake up again or have to write it on a, on a note or something. But, uh, yeah, that's so weird. I have no idea where they are. And I, I, I think I might even order another set because silicone tip tools are my favorite oil pastel blending solution. Although I did find the little felt stumps worked really well too. I was surprised. I thought they might pick too much up, but they were, they were pretty good. But the silicone ones I really like because they're kind of soft, but not too soft. They're kind of like the, the perfect, they're like your fingers. They're like that, that perfect, like, um, like the perfect, almost like the same texture of skin, really. I know that sounds gross, but they blend perfectly and I can't find them. And I'm just like, what on earth could I have done with them? And I'm trying to think, did I lend them to the, one of the kids for a project or something? I just, I have no idea. I have no idea what happened to them. So if you have any idea, if you remember what I used them for last or where I might've put them, please let me know, leave me a comment. I don't know, I've had a lot of really good, um, a lot of really good ideas, uh, suggestions from folks under that video, but they haven't, they haven't, uh, produced my tools yet. <laughs> Crowd, crowdsourcing my brain. I'm crowdsourcing my memory. I felt like, um, you know, when you got a computer and it's, and it's totally full and it's slowing down and you've got a bunch of tabs open and you're trying to like edit photos and edit a video and render a video and, you know, do a bunch of things all at once and things start it, it, it slowing down and just kind of like freezing. I feel like that's what I feel like my, my, what is it, my ROM or my RAM? I feel like my brain RAM is like at 99.9% .9 capacity. And so it's like, something's gotta go. You gotta defrag, you gotta, you gotta move some stuff. You gotta back some stuff up somewhere else so you can free up some working memory. <laughs> but uh, after, after that good sleep, I'm feeling like uh, I have a lot more, um, a lot more RAM, RAM, right? Random access memory. I feel like I have a lot more of that now. <laughs> But yeah. Oh, I think it's April Fool's Day. Isn't it April 1st today uh, on the day this is um, this is going? Um, I will probably try to avoid most people because I don't want to get pranked. <laughs> I don't know if I would get pranked. I always think I'm going to have some great idea, some like great idea for a YouTube video and some like April Fool's prank, but I don't think I've ever done an April Fool's video, which is really sad that I'm not creative enough to think of a prank for April Fool's Day, but yeah, there it is. There it is. Maybe I'm just destined to be the one that gets pranked, not the pranker. I'm dest destined to be the pranky and not the pranker. Um, but it is kind of fun. It's kind of fun when you're like, ah, you know, you read something, it's like, oh my gosh, that's great. And it's like, oh, they got me, you know. Usually it's only like whoever's email you open first or whoever's video you see first are the ones that get you. Um, that's all fun. It's all fun, I suppose. Well, is that it? I can't believe I've talked for... 27 minutes and really it's been it hasn't really been much of a week of stuff to share that I'm that I'm sharing it's all stuff it's all future stuff um but but we do have fun don't we we do have fun I did have fun oh I had lunch with Kathy from uh Ask a Crafter on Tuesday um and that was really nice and uh and I did a, a playlist of the Ask a Crafter to make a podcast. Did I ever circle back to that idea? Anyway, there's a podcast, a couple podcast playlists. One is Ask a Crafter. One is Sat Chat. If you want something to listen to when you go about your tasks or chores or whatever, they're there. Um, it's been a random week. It's been a random Sat Chat. I hope you've enjoyed it. And let me know what you're up to in the comments below. And if you know where my silicone tip tools are, please let me know because it's driving me nuts. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.